So I'm at my local fish store the other day and I see these three frontosa. Just got me thinking about potentially doing a frontosa colony tank at some point. What do you guys think of frontosa? Let me know in the comments. But for now, let's get into the video. And today we're looking at what's going on in the fish room with our blue neon group. So let's take a look. So if you tuned in or remember last week's video, we ended it with a look at the blue neon male and he was getting a little bit frisky after we'd fed him that night. And this video is looking at what's ensued since that night. And this kind of behavior has only got one thing in mind, so we've got some babies. Here he is a few days after, still looking pretty cool and flexing a whole lot. But as you can see here, he's moved a lot of the sand from his little breeding pit there. And there's one female just underneath that rock that you can kind of see. And she's got a mouthful. So the plan is to get her from underneath that rock and strip her and then put the eggs in an artificial tumbler as it's been about four or five days. And I kind of want to strip her a little bit earlier than what I usually do, just because she is a younger female and I don't want her to accidentally swallow a lot of the eggs as they're slowly growing her mouth. So let's catch her and gently take the eggs out of her mouth. If you've got any questions about this process, I'll leave a link in the description showing you exactly how to strip African cichlid females so you can check out that video if you've got any questions of how to do that. So here, I've transported the eggs from the mother's mouth to the net and then into the tumbler. And as you can see, I've got a pretty decent number. The eggs all look to be fertile. If they weren't fertile, they'd be whitish rather than yellowish. The yellowish color shows to me that they're fertile. And for right now, they're going in the 29 gallon and they're just being gently rocked with the Tinksky egg tumbler that I've had for quite a while now. This tumbler is around $12 or $13 on Amazon, so again, I'll link that in the description for you if you want to check it out. Really, really good tumbler. Although the one thing that I would suggest is always making sure that you've got an air stone instead of just using the airline tubing as the airline tubing can make the flow through the tube a little bit erratic and it also makes a one hell of a noise so be sure that you've got an air stone on there just to make the tumbler work a little better for you so here's the little holding tank right now tumbler on the left hand side the alunacara walleri doing pretty good on the left hand side and the little stud blue neon male in the right hand side is doing really good and his fins are growing out really really nicely the five gallon, I've got seven or eight blue neon fry. You can't really see them too good in that angle, but here you can see the size of them. These are growing pretty good, and I should be able to grow these guys out at the same time as the ones in the tumbler, as I believe there's only maybe about 25, 30 days between them. The Lunacara Luanda that I got last weekend from John's Quality Cichlids is doing well in the five and a half, and hopefully his brother in the little pot there is doing good as well seems to be a little bit more shy but they're both eating so that's good the 55 gallon this blue neon i believe is looking more and more like a male every day so pretty excited about that and his dad's just killing it still digging sand pits still wanting to breed with more females so happy days there we should have a plethora of blue neon males coming your way so anyway guys thanks a lot for watching hope you've enjoyed this video and i'll be sure to keep you up to date on the process of the blue neons turning from eggs to fry and then juvenile fish thanks for tuning in be sure to hit that sub button if you haven't already click the notification bell and we'll see you on the next one